Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be making medicines with dandelions. So I just got back inside from harvesting some fresh dandelion flowers. It's late April, actually it's May 1st here in Southern Ontario. So this is the perfect time to harvest some dandelion flowers. Now in just a second, I'm gonna show you a picture of what I'm looking for when I'm harvesting flowers. You want to try to get them in the beginning of your flowering period. So I'm gonna show you that picture here. So as you can see, there were still lots of unopened flowers on that dandelion, which is exactly what I want. I want to gather some of the first ones and then ensuring that the species can continue to grow. Um, the plant will produce many, many, many more flowers. So today we are going to be making dandelion flower tincture and a dandelion flower vinegar. So I'm going to start with the tincture. When I use dandelion um, aerial parts, so the parts that grow above the ground in clinic, I like to use a combination of the flowers and the leaves. So as I mentioned previously, this is the perfect time to be harvesting the flowers. However, I want to wait till mid-June, kind of early July to harvest the leaves because I want them as bitter as possible. Right now, dandelion leaves are excellent for salads because they don't quite have that same bitter bite to them as they will get later on in the season. However, when I'm making them or using them for medicine, I want as much bitter as possible. The reason for this is that dandelions are amazing at supporting the liver. They have um, cholagog properties, which help to stimulate bile production. They're really great diuretics as well. They're anti-rheumatic, so they're gonna help with any type of rheumatic type condition, including arthritis. And they're a decent little febrifuge, so they're gonna help with fevers as well. So I love to have dandelion flower and leaf tincture in clinic. And when I press them, I press them together. So I'll make my dandelion flower tincture separately and my dandelion leaf tincture separately. And then when I press them, I combine them in equal portions, one to one ratio. So I'm gonna start by making the dandelion tincture. And for this, I'm gonna be using a 500 milliliter mason jar and I'm going to need 87 grams. These are the ratios that I was taught at Living Earth School of Herbalism. You're welcome to check out their school in the link below. So I'm gonna zero out my scale and I'm gonna measure out 87 grams. I'm far more specific when it comes, in terms of measurements, when it comes to making tinctures than I will be for the vinegar, as you'll see, because the vinegar is just for my family to enjoy. All right. So I have got 87 grams here right now, and I will get to chopping in just a moment. So as you can see, I am chopping up my dandelion flowers and everyone always asks, this knife is called a mezzaluna and I will spell it for you so you can try to find one because it makes this type of work so much more efficient. When you're chopping herbs for tincture, you really want to work as efficiently as possible because they are oxidizing on my cutting board as we speak. So this isn't a great time to, you know, I've said it before, to take a phone call or stop and check Instagram or whatever it is that you're doing. Try to be um, as efficient as possible. And you wanna chop them fairly fine because you have to try to cram 87 grams of herbs into a 500 milliliter mason jar. So the menstruum of choice that is the easiest for most people to find would be vodka. So menstruum is just the, um, the substance we use to extract the medicine. So in this case, when you're making a tincture, your menstruum is alcohol. Vodka works great. But when we make our uh, dandelion infused vinegar, the menstruum is going to be apple cider vinegar. So I've got my herbs chopped for my tincture. And then I like to use these wide mouth funnels that you can get for canning because I tend to be a little messy. And it just helps to get all of the material into the jar. And if you've chopped it fine enough, your 87 grams will fit into your 500 milliliter mason jar. So the yield in terms of tincture is probably gonna be close to about 400 milliliters because of course the herbs themselves take up some space. So there we go. And then I am going to top off with my alcohol or menstruum. Now it's really important that you have some parchment paper handy as well if you're going to be using mason jars with metal lids because both the alcohol and the apple cider vinegar are going to corrode your lid. So that will serve as a barrier between the two. 
So I always like to wait just a, a minute to make sure it all settles in there. And sometimes after 24 hours, I'll actually take the lid off, take a peek and then top up with just a little bit more alcohol. You want to avoid opening your lid over and over again, because again, you're exposing your medicine to oxygen, which oxidizes it. Now your tinctures are gonna to wanna to sit for at least six weeks. And I tend to only press my tinctures once I need them. And then they'll be good for about a year or two on the shelf. But while the herbs are still in them, they'll last for upwards of a decade. So that's why I say I only like to press my tinctures once I need them. So you can see I put my parchment paper in between my lid. I give it a good shake. Um, I'll make sure to label it. So you're going to want to put the name of the herb, the day that you made your medicine, and then it's up to you if you want to include information like where you harvested it and perhaps your alcohol to herb ratio. So in this case, it would be a one to five ratio tincture. And I'll get to doing that after, but for now I'm gonna switch gears and we'll be making our vinegar. So with my leftover dandelions, I'm going to be making a dandelion infused raw apple cider vinegar. So there's a few things you can use this for because dandelions, in addition to all of those amazing properties I just told you about, are also highly nutritive. So they're really high in vitamins and minerals and all the things that we need after having a long winter with very little sunshine and probably eating a lot of root vegetables if you're like us. So the vinegar you can add to your drinking water, say just a tablespoon if you'd like to, but we love to use dandelion infused vinegar for salad dressings. So I'm just roughly chopping these. You can choose to keep them whole if you'd like, but I just wanna chop them up a little bit. And I'm gonna be making a liter. My goal is to fill the jar about three quarters of the way or so. So again, I'm not quite as precise with this particular recipe because I'm just gonna be keeping it for my family and I'm not using it as medicine per se, but more as a, a nutrition boost or a nutritive. And you see what I mean by being messy? <laughs> I get stuff everywhere. So I was pretty close to three quarters of the way full. And just like your tincture, you wanna make sure you've got parchment paper for the lid, so that way your lid doesn't corrode. And I highly recommend using a raw apple cider vinegar if you can, because there's a lot of nutritional benefits from using raw apple cider vinegar as opposed to the, the hind stuff. Whereas this has a lot of um, digestive support uh, already built into it. So you're just gonna fill up your jar. Now vinegars don't take as long as tinctures. This will probably be ready in as little as two or three weeks. And you'll know right away because it will turn a brilliant yellow color and it'll be quite stunning, especially if you like to use it in a salad dressing. So again, got my parchment paper barrier and my lid. And I'm gonna give it a shake. So both my tincture and my apple cider vinegar will be stored in a cool, dark place, ideally. Try to avoid having it like above your stove, somewhere where it gets really, really hot. The light will also oxidize your medicines, which is why I'm saying keep it in a cabinet or tucked away somewhere out of light. Ensure you label both. So again, your vinegar will be about two to three weeks, but you'll see it turn this beautiful yellow color. So you'll know when it's done. Your tincture you want to sit for at least six weeks, but I don't recommend you press it until you need it. So I hope you like this video on making dandelion flower vinegar and dandelion flower tincture. I'm also gonna post some links below from my blog where I have some dandelion flower recipes that you might want to experiment with, especially if you have access to an overabundance of dandelion flowers this time of year. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that be sure on your foraging, wild harvesting and gathering adventures that you are not picking dandelions from anywhere that may have been sprayed. You don't really want a lot of pesticides and gunk in your food or your medicines. Let me know what you like to make with dandelions. Please comment below. If you like my content, I always appreciate a thumbs up and a subscription to the channel. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.